Katherine Gibson for AM Insight. Today I'm here with filmmaker Yoruba Richin to talk about her new documentary, Promised Land, a film that explore, explores post-apartheid South Africa. Yoruba, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You tell two main stories in the film, and one of the, the one of the most powerful stories is Hans Visser and the Maluma family. I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about what that story says about the larger issues of land reconciliation in South Africa. I think that that story uh, with Visser and Malamu is their, their name, um, is really shows how the emotional impact on both the land, the, the uh, formerly dis, uh, disenfranchised black indigenous population and the white farmers who have also been there for generations. Um, how complicated it is to take a piece of land away from, you know, forcibly, essentially, away from, uh, away from the population that has been in power mm -hmm. and to give it to, uh, an, to give it back to the disenfranchised. Um, and how do you, you know, how do you do that? What's the cost? Because South Africa, the government pays for the land. It's not like they are just taking it away. They have a, a legal process um, in place. But you know that story shows that there are fights about the cost of the land, what's the, the market value of it, um, uh, how, if and how, the landless, the, the, the claimants and the, the white farmers can work together. Um, you know, Visser says at one point, uh, you know, we could, we could work together. And, and um, Kathy Malama says they have no interest in doing that. I think one of the most interesting parts of the film is how almost everybody says, you know, they say some variation on, oh, my ancestors were on this land for five generations, or my ancestors had been kicked off of this land for four or five generations. I would like you to, you know, just talk a little bit about how the land plays into the formation of a new South African identity and how that's an integral part of how that country is reforming and, and becoming something new. It's a really good question. Um, I don't think I realized, I didn't realize until I started this story, that first off, apartheid um, was based on, on dis land dispossession. Um, so the very nature of the, the way the, you know, this, this inhumane government was set up was on land. The ANC, the African National Congress, in their Freedom Charter, uh, they had, I think it was 10 points in their Freedom Charter, um, you know, that when the ANC was formed in the, in the 50s, I, I believe. Um, the, one of the first ones is we will return the land back to its people. So that was fundamentally a part of the freedom struggle. Um, and what they, you know, ran and campaigned and, and fought for and died for. So it's very, very deep. When the ANC came in, obviously, as governments, as we see everywhere, <laughs> compromise happens, mm -hmm. compromise happens. And, um, you know, the ANC, which had a, which had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Marxist and, and communist ideas, uh, when they were out of power, came into power and had to, you know, chose to go for a more market-based system. And um, so they, the way they instituted the, the land reform, um, you know, was this willing buyer, willing seller concept, and um, which has, you know, as the film shows, has a lot of, has a lot of challenges. So, you know, you start from the dispossession, uh, and then you uh, see how the ANC uh, it, that the, the, the land is a part of the freedom struggle and then you go to okay now the ANC is in power and they're not meeting the promises um, and or fast that they're not meeting it fast enough um, for a lot of you know for the landless and you have a white population that you also have to deal with because they don't want to um, they want to keep you know they don't want to scare off the white population. They there when they came into power, it was about reconciliation and about how do we become a nation of all people, not punish people. I'm just scared that we're going to go the same route as the rest of Africa. They kick out the whites, then they take over, and the country never comes right. I don't want to say it's a it's a, it's a reverse of the forceful remover, but he doesn't have choice. Uh, there's not much that an individual can do in order to defend himself against institutions such as the government. Commercial white farmers. 
All that they want is to make profit. While we don't have anywhere to live, we want our land back and we want it now. So it's a very complicated thing and the land is just tied into that and all through, you know, all, all through the history and, and present day. Now, given that it's so complicated, I find it interesting there are a lot of inflammatory statements, a lot of controvers controversial statements that get made in the film, and the film really steps back and holds off on commenting on any of them. And I was wondering if the film was always shaped in that way, or if you looked at the material you had and said, you know, this is the way that I have to approach it. Mm -hmm. When did you make that decision? But when I started to research the story, um, I became very interested in how the population in power now that the population that was in power now that the political situ situation has changed and they're being asked to um, and told that they have to give something up you know materially how do you do that I mean it's very easy uh, you know and my mom used to say it's very easy to let us drink at the same water fountains mm -hmm. but when it comes time to actually um, redistribute material things that's the hard part and you know I think we see that all around the world in post-colonial societies so that became very interesting to me um, and I went in and I wanted to f their side of the story you know um, so I did go in wanting their side of the story and and wanting to and I also believe as a filmmaker I really believe in giving people their best shot I mean even if you it doesn't matter if you don't agree with them it's very easy to uh, you know make fun of people or downgrade them as a, you know, uh, in the film, and I wasn't interested in doing that. Um, I was interested in challenging people's ideas on, on both sides. I, I've had some people say to me, you know, that Visser character, he was so sympathetic. I was mad that I felt sympathy for him, you know. Um, or other people say, uh, well, the, you know, the Malamus, they're, they're middle class and they, you know, maybe, maybe they're not farmers. Uh, in some ways I don't feel like they should get the land back because they are doing fine but there is a historical you know the fact that their their family's land was taken away forcibly so I was very in, in and that's what I'm you know most proud of that uh, the discussions around the film you know seem are challenging people's ideas of and I thought the best way to do that was not to put in you know my own view or what I thought was right but let I really wanted both sides to tell the story that was happening to them. Given this long running process, when you step back and you look at all of the contentious debates that have gone on because of land reconciliation, do you think in the long term it's been a good thing for South Africa or that it's added yet another issue to the issues that already divide the races there? Mm. I think that it's something that uh, they had to do. Mm -hmm. This was, um, as I said, this is what this injust the injustice system of apartheid was based on. It's what the uh, ANC promised, um, you know, when they came to power, and it's uh, it's a moral issue, you know, it's a it's an issue of um, righting a wrong that was done to the to the people, and so you could not you could not do it. Um, certainly, there are better you know there may have been better ways to go about it. There may be uh, uh, mistakes that that were made in terms of you know the process or, or you know various aspects of the policy, but um, it's something that that has to be done, that had to, and still has to be done. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much.